Hey, how's it going everybody? So I had a ton of feedback on my initial Nikon Z9, um, you know, first impressions. And so a ton of people were telling me how I was doing everything wrong uh, with for, as far as settings and, and stuff like that. Um, so, you know, first off, I, I appreciate the feedback and the help, the suggestions and everything like that. Um, so I wanted to try and address as many of them as I could remember off the top of my head and show you that uh, I still don't believe it's a settings thing that is this main issue that I was talking about when photographing songbirds in the forest. And so I have the Z9 here attached to my Nikon 500 F4G. It is an old lens. It's pretty beat up. I'll admit that. And I'm using the original FTZ adapter. Um, and so that's the setup right now. I'm going to be shooting this at F4 and uh, full manual settings here. Uh, one person addressed that um, when I'm recording out to the external recorder that that hinders focus. Um, I haven't experienced that at all. I still have these same issues when I don't have anything hooked up. So um, from my experience, there is zero difference there. So I just wanted to talk about that first off. And then I think let's just kind of jump into it and you'll be able to see what I'm doing here. So I don't use back button autofocus. I do focus with my shutter button. So you'll see me uh, focusing as I go here and shoot. So. Uh, let me get started and actually record through the viewfinder. So you're now seeing through the viewfinder. And I have this lovely fake bird here. So I have a, a very cooperative subject. It's, I don't know, maybe 15 feet away, maybe a little bit more than that. Um, pretty good size in the frame here, as you can see. And I, um, I have a, a super clean background from this distance here. So the background's really far away. Nice soft light, that's the other thing. Um, in overcast light, um, I've actually had the camera operate a little bit better because in stronger sunny light, especially when there's bright areas in the background, the camera seems to really be attracted to that. So I thought, let me do it in overcast light so I can give it the best chance it has, at least again, in my experience. This is all my experience, you know? So here we go. Um, so I'm just gonna start with a single point autofocus here. I am in continuous autofocus as well. So I'm gonna stay in that. This is how I shoot everything, and I assume this is how most people shoot. So uh, I'm in focus here, everything's nice. So I'm gonna focus on the background real quick. I'm gonna let off and focus on the background there. And you can see we have some stuff focused in the background. And then I'm gonna try and let up. Now I'm letting up and focusing again. You can see through the viewfinder. So here, I'm gonna show you my hand, letting up and focusing again. Now I'm gonna go back to the viewfinder. You can see through the viewfinder, I'm letting up, focusing again. You can see my bird out of focus in the foreground here. Watch, I'm gonna manually rack focus and get it a little bit closer. And then I'm gonna press the shutter button again and look where it went, to the background. I'm gonna try and get it a little bit closer this time and then let go, press focus again, to the background. I'm gonna bring it all the way up to just about the bird's in focus. There we go, we finally jumped in focus, all right? So um, if the camera focuses on something in the background like that and you just, you, I have my out of focus subject clear as day point blank right in front of me i'm focusing 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 nothing is happening the camera's just locked on the background i'll try moving it around i mean i'm trying everything i can here to get this camera to come back and it will not so everybody suggests all of these other um helpful things to get the camera to focus uh bring the focus back forward again and again uh, i'm very aware of those thank you again for the suggestions but they aren't a solution. They are just a, a workaround, uh, which kind of sucks. Um, so uh, the best thing that I found is I have, uh, my 500 F4 has the uh, buttons around the, the lens. So I set a pre-focus all the way at minimum focus. So that way here, I'll press that right now. So now the camera has jumped all the way back to minimum focus, and then I can let my autofocus take over and grab the bird right there. Absolutely no problem. So is that a huge deal? Not really, you know, it's usually something I can do, but sometimes I find myself in an awkward position on my monopod or handheld and I'm bent over trying to get through an opening and then the bird's there and I see it out of focus and I press the shutter button to focus or my focus button, whatever you have set up and the camera shoots to the background. And then I'm in such an awkward position, I can't get my hand to that button to bring it back or even mess with the focus ring because I'm, I'm off at a weird angle and trying to support the lens in every way possible. And it simply means a missed shot. The other option is, and I'll do this right now, we'll focus on the background, is I can point all the way down at the ground here and focus on something close and then come back up and grab focus, right? So that works. So I'm focused on the background. Again, I'm trying to focus on the bird. I can't get the bird. I'll focus on something really close here and then come back and grab my bird. So that's what I have to do in those awkward positions. But again, this sucks that I have to do this. So 
Uh, for everybody saying it's a, a settings issue, I'm gonna go through other focus settings in a bit. Um, I don't believe so. Um, I believe it's a technology issue with mirrorless cameras. Um, are Canon and, and Sony a little bit better? Maybe, uh, but I've heard from many people I trust that shoot both of those cameras, uh, both those brands, that they have and struggle with the same issues. So the first one I was told was to try wide area large. So we're gonna try that and you can see the focus is tracking quite nicely here. It's really nice that it even goes outside of the frame and then as soon as I come back near the box, uh, it picks back up, so that's kind of cool. I do like that. So I'm gonna focus on the background accidentally. Now I'm trying to get it to focus back on the subject there. It's not working. Trying and trying and trying. I'll focus down on the ground here. Now we're pretty close. It still goes to the background. Like how ridiculous is that? So I'm even if I try and get it down to something close here, I think I'm close. I come up, I see the image pretty clear, the bird out of focus. I press it, my focus button, and it jumps to the background. I mean, it's kind of ridiculous. I have to come really, really close to minimal here, and then I can pick back up and get it, or use the uh, preset focus or manually rack focus to get it back. So, uh, so wide area large not working. Let's go wide area small. Accidentally hit the background. I'm right on my subject here. You can see it clear as day. I'm pressing the focus button. It's not working. Uh, I'll just kind of jump it right back here and then there we go. Now it's working. So um, again, this subject is uh, a black and white head, uh, black eye on a white head, you know, uh, bright orange breast on the bird. So dark, non-distracting background here. Um, there is zero reason it should be picking that up, uh, the background versus the subject and not coming back to it. Other than the fact that this is how this technology works. It just will not continue to search. Um, and that's, that's fine. I just want to make that clear to everybody. I don't think it's a setting thing. It's just how mirrorless technology works. So let's continue here. We'll just try kind of every mode here. We'll go uh, dynamic large, grab the background. I'm pressing again and again. Oh, almost got it to come there, but not quite. It's gonna lock in on that background. I'll bring it back. Then we'll switch to dynamic medium. I accidentally catch the background. You can see I barely moved off that time. But again, I cannot get my subject back. I'll come down to the foreground here. And again, I didn't go enough, so I'll try and go again. Look, that's pretty close to in focus. There we go, now I grabbed it that time. That's good. All right, so we'll go dynamic small. Just miss a little bit. I'll have to jump it back manually. So miss again just a little bit, pressing focus again and again and again. It will not come back to my subject. So I'll press my button on the lens to jump it back and now we have our subject. So uh, let's go also and try just overall 3D tracking. Overall 3D, uh, I'm sorry, uh, animal recognition with no 3D tracking, right? Where it's just picking anything in the frame there. It works great. You can really see it just tracks all over the uh, image there. If I'm off, I'll throw off focus just a little bit here. You can see as soon as I come in here, it's just gonna kind of grab that eye. It recognizes the bird rather quickly and just grabs it for me. That works nicely. So let's accidentally hit the background here and then see if we can get it to come back here. You can see it's trying all kinds of different stuff depending on where I'm pointing it in the frame here. It will not come back to that subject, which is point blank, large and in charge right in the frame. Uh, so again, I, there's, it's not a setting thing that I can tell, you know? It's just the way this technology works. It is not a setting thing uh, in any way, shape, or form. I've tried every setting. I've gone through all the options that everybody suggested, which again, I do appreciate and thank you for that. Um, but from everything I can tell, this is just simply how this mirrorless technology works. Um, and so let's try, you know what I haven't done actually? Let's go to single point and let's try autofocus single instead of continuous autofocus. So I'll miss a little bit there. And now let's see when I come back. No, I mean, it doesn't really matter what I'm doing here. Uh, it seems like it's almost trying though more. There we go. Wow, I actually got it to come back by going down into the middle there. Let's see if I can get it to do that again on continuous. All right, let's try. We'll go back to continuous. Oops, sorry, we'll stay on single. We'll go back to continuous. So I'll miss, come back here continuous does not want to come back. So I guess single shot autofocus is a little bit more sensitive. You can see it trying here, but it just there, we finally got it. But I mean, did you see how many times I had to try? And I had to hit that huge chunk right there. I mean, that's a solid chunk under that focus point. And so if I were 
to uh, to miss that just a little bit, or it wasn't such a solid branch and it was a smaller bird, a little bit smaller in the frame further away, there's no way that camera's coming back. It will not refocus back. So uh, that's just the way this works. So I'm gonna stop this recording here and I'm going to switch up to the D4S. So let's disconnect this. And we'll set this down here, grab my D4S. Much older technology. This camera, talk about beat up, you know. I mean, I've been shooting this camera for almost seven years. Um, it's been through a lot. But we'll switch on here. Um, I'm just gonna grab the uh, camera here and just hold it up to the viewfinder so you guys can see. All right, so I'm gonna do my best here to try this. I'm just gonna use single point. I'm in continuous, so I missed. I'll go to the background there. Let's see, I can't, I can't even get it to miss. There we go, right? So we'll get focus in the background. I come back to the bird, press focus, grab it. Uh, I'll go back to the background again. There's my bird, try it once, right back to it. So uh, focus on the background, right back to the bird here. I don't even have to actually fully hit the bird. I think earlier I was testing this and I could actually see this leaf. Look, I'm hitting like leaves, right? Watch, go to the background. There's a very faint uh, leaf out of focus under the foreground here. So I'll hit that and look, you can see it's trying to jump back and it grabs that. I mean, that is so much more sensitive. And again, I understand from what I've now heard and read from everybody, it's simply how the technology works. But at least for this kind of photography, when I'm shooting songbirds in the forest, if I miss and accidentally hit the background, I can let go, reinitiate autofocus, and it jumps right back to my subject really quick and easy, much faster, much more accurate, and I don't miss those shots. Yeah, so I've tried to change all these different settings. I've tried every option I can see that deals with focus on the Z9, and none of these settings changes seem to make a difference in this specific scenario. I still love the camera. I still think the camera's great. I'm not um, upset that I got it. I don't regret buying this camera at all, but this is a, a, a big and kind of, I wouldn't say severe, but it's a big limitation, or at least, uh, maybe not even limitation, it's a big annoyance. That's the, the most accurate description I think I can say about it uh, for this style of photography. So as long as I'm aware of it, yes, I will use the workarounds. They do help, they allow you to get back and get the shot. I shot the Z6 II for the past year and did fine with Warbler photography, but there were totally shots I missed. And so if this is the main thing that you photograph and you don't want to have those missed shots, mirrorless is probably not the thing for you right now, you know? But everything else kind of outweighs it and I do love the camera. And just like I said before, I will be uh, putting out another video probably in a month or two when I've had more time with the camera to get more used to it. Um, each day I'm out shooting with the camera, I do get more used to it and more comfortable with it uh, and figuring out and understanding these limitations and that sort of thing. So uh, overall, still digging the Z9. I'm gonna be shooting this way more. I probably am gonna get rid of the D4S at this point uh, and just keep the Z6 II as a backup. Uh, I just don't have any use for this anymore. Um, and the camera's just kinda, you know, uh, past its prime, let's say. <laughs> uh, so I'm happy with the Z9. Uh, I'm sure you will be happy with it. Just be aware of this limitation. And thanks for watching. And uh, I hope this kinda clears up those issues.